I need to know everything Who and the what and the where I need everything Trust me, I hear what you're saying But I like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche It's 5 right, We're rolling right now? We're rolling Yeah, we are It's been a th- long three days, bro Yeah, uh, banter for the people We're at the Content Trap House mm-hmm. uh, We got Mannery in the house We got Cat All of it um, Basically today what we're talking about Is just like how we got into this space mm-hmm. We've gotten... You know, Bob's coming on the Purple Banter team. We're coming on Bob's team. It's 7.30 mm-hmm. on a Sunday. We've been locked in this house for three days. We haven't we haven't moved. No. That's the way I operate, though. Like, I'm in a good, like, workspace right now, so I like to really just go hard. I don't It's stop. basically training camp. I very, like, I'm OCD when it comes to yeah. certain things. I'm, 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 like, obsessive. But you see the progress we made. We made great yeah. progress today, right? We've watched you build your next at least two months out. In the last 72 hours, For which sure. has been unbelievable. Yeah, but all help to you guys because I wouldn't have had Josh DeHamel coming in without you guys. Do we Mel. appreciate it. Dumel. Dumel? Dumel. Fuck, my bad. <laughs> we're yeah. just prepping for tomorrow. It's I, fine. I, I fucked that up. But we're excited about like what's kind of taking place because there's a lot of moving parts, mm-hmm. but they're all creating stability like in all of our lanes. What where, does that mean? Well, stability in the sense that- Was one, that just a statement you made up to try and sound intelligent? Or was well, it, no, because no, banter for the people, like, you know, you've seen- the array of content we've done but this in particular is like lj and i talking about building this like stupid crazy fucking company that we've done for the past nine months yep. and mm-hmm. like we want to expose to people the ins and outs of like what this looks like what it's like the building process yeah yeah i mean i think you, know? that, uh, you guys we've sat down before right oh yeah yeah you guys have. what was the uh what was your biggest episode to date uh, yours, I think, it was our oh, biggest nice. episode. Yeah. I was just checking. That's awesome. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad I came back, though. But we did it originally. You weren't involved, were you? Well, I was involved, but not on Smart and Wild. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we were because we, we were doing Smart and Wild at that point, and we will bring those shows back. Yeah. But what was, what ended up happening is as we started to build all like these materials out, get better like camera equipment, learn how to edit a little bit, trying to bridge the gaps to be able to do our own stuff, we realized, oh, shit, we could start doing this with other people. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we always wanted to build out a network of individuals right. that like could take it bigger. And we always want to work with good people that are driven to fucking drive it farther and then like build whether it's fun for the fucking people listening or whether it's insightful, whatever mm-hmm. it is. Yeah. And I think, you know, bringing you into the mix and us being able to go into your mix, it you are like a hustler's university of stuff. I don't want to connect you to Andrew Tate with that, but yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I think it, I think the reason why I joined you guys. I mean, obviously, you guys work just as hard as I do, but uh, you know, you really that three thirty a.m. drive that you drove me on. I can't talk about it. <laughs> yeah, but I told LJ at three thirty in the morning. I was a little bit heated at something just in my head, yeah. and I had to go see about You're something. And so I was like, "Yo, I need a favor. Can you bring me in? If shit, yeah. if shit goes down, will you have my back?" And I think you said, I'm a dancer, man. I think that was your, that was your response. <laughs> you said you were a dancer? Said, I'm like, great. He's like, you want to go out? I'm like, I'm a dancer. I'll go out. No, no, no. But we had a, we had he's a, like a rider. He really did a big, big solid favor for me. That just helped. And then I was like, oh, you know, yeah. fuck it. And then we're here and you guys are providing a lot of equipment for me to use. And I have a lot of people that watch podcasts and do podcasts. And I enjoy building things too. Yeah. From and, the ground up. I really do. And what's always wild about all of these different universes is you find that so many people are working alone. Right. And you specifically watching you build your media empire with just your phone is unreal. You don't I don't use a, I don't use a laptop. You don't own one. <laughs> I don't own one. I've never owned one in my life. I have just a cell phone. The interesting thing about you too is like you you're not like a stuff guy. Like what I mean, you don't you have money, but you don't buy like stuff stuff right i don't really need much i need a cell phone i need right. a fucking sweatshirt and i need these pants i just don't have any clothes that's my thing i gotta get i gotta get clothes i'm fucked <laughs> like, I, I, Ooh, maybe we do like a rodeo trip like with a stylist yeah not rodeo not rodeo stylist. like a no, stylist fuck trip. That. that's oh, not no, me as a matter of fact i fucking hate la you guys know that yeah you do. And i hate this place that's why more we've than ever. been in this house yeah. for three days i don't leave the house i don't like to leave the house at all i really don't i don't like la spooks me i had a very bad past here back in the day when i originally came out here the first time and then I've had some recent incidents that I just really turned me off from this place. I fucking hate it here, but sometimes there's a lot of people out here that you got to get. And so, well, that's one of the reasons that honestly, purple banters in LA, we're being from Minnesota, is culture does set here. You can get easy interviews, Mm -hmm. people are available, and there's so much negative energy in LA. I hope that over time we can like crowd that out a little bit. Yeah. For we can build community that's like fun, happy wants to do good things and just drives well, it Well, that's what we are like constantly talking about of like 
people that fuck with us or people who are in our circle, like we're just, we don't, people that don't fuck with us quietly exit themselves. Who out. doesn't fuck with you guys? Mm. Well, we've actually, oh, well, now you'll have a lot of people not fucking with you by messing with me. Probably. So. Yeah. But what's funny <laughs> It'll about itself out. What's funny about it though, is like, there's true things of like negative energy. Yeah. We've worked with a few people that it just felt fucking negative. It wasn't right. Get and out. we're just, Cut they just out. distance exactly. themselves with exactly. you. Exactly. We, we haven't, I told you guys like, you know, you're, you're trying to obviously scale up like anybody else is another company, but you know, uh, cause it's you too. And then you have a couple other people yeah. working with it, yeah. but you're in the beginning stage of building it. But, uh, like this kid that's coming over lady editor, I run a tight ship. Like, you yeah. know, they, they were, we were all talking about how they need like a good editor, you know? To cut things up, and yeah. so I got I got a guy here who I think is pretty good. But if he doesn't if he doesn't get it done in Scratch. fifteen minutes, I might throw him out. That's <laughs> yeah. it. I'd love to see and that. he's not getting fucking paid. He'll get paid on round two, and that's it. Yeah. And that what I love about you, and what a lot of people might not understand, if if they have a misconception of you, your followers <laughs> understand you, but Mostly. there's a group of people that probably don't. Mm -hmm. You may be erratic and hard driving. But you're you're so well intended. Yeah, you don't. You're not malicious. <clears throat> yeah, oh. no, not at all. Uh, no, not malicious at all. I sometimes lose my mind. You know, I have a. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, like we lose our. We mind. all do. I just don't like to be alone either. Sometimes that's why I felt bad. Like you were here all day last night, and you know I really didn't want you to leave. <laughs> but I like kept reassuring. I'm like, Dad, you can go. LJ and Bob have a huge. Yeah, you kept on telling me to leave. I'm like, dude, I'm just. Well, I just felt movie. bad because I was like, dude. I mean, this guy's here all day. But the good news is, like, you want it as badly as I want it, and that's good. When you have a group of people that all want it so fucking badly, they're willing to just never fucking stop working. It's it's fucking a deadly combo. Because uh, I only left because I didn't. I was like, you know what? I've been here for 72 hours. Maybe he just wants the place to himself. That's how I would help. No, I never really want the place to myself. That's why I always have, like, really? especially at the separation with my, you know, person yeah. before I, you know, tried to, even some girls just come over and don't even, we don't even do anything. I just hang. I like to have somebody around. I, yeah. I think if I'm by myself, I just think too much and it's not good for me. Is that the biggest misconception about you that you think? Mm, with what? Is what, what? Is, what is the biggest misconception that you think? People Honestly, think I you. think the biggest misconception is that I'm a douchebag and I'm an asshole. I mean, I can come across that way, but like you said, my intentions are good. Yeah. I'm just learned to be very direct because I, you know, when you had seven years of just people coming yeah. at you all the time right. or people dropping out or doing it, I learned to just cut the bullshit. People fucking you over, the trust being broken, all this stuff. So I'm just pretty direct. I don't see any other reason why not to be direct. And sometimes I can come off being an asshole, but it's, I'm just doing it for, I don't know, my intentions are good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. You know, that's it. So it's tough, though. This industry is cutthroat. The funny thing about LJ is like, so I was in media for a while, but LJ has never been on a set. And I want you to tell the story about like how you create or how, how you came up with like why you wanted to work in media and how it's actually been. It was like a blessing in disguise. Yeah. So, I mean, I was doing food and bedroom stuff. We had uh, this juice spot for 10 fucking years. Okay. I always knew I wanted to get into media at some point because I wanted to approach it in a way where find good people with good stories that like are going to help people understand the world better. Mm -hmm. um, and within about six months of realizing that's what I, I wanted to do at some point, our company just fucking took a nosedive because our investors from Turkey ended up embezzling a bunch of money what through our account. What the fuck is going we, on here? We yeah. raised three and a half million dollars. Oh my God. And... We signed a bunch of exclusive manufacturing agreements. They bought our manufacturer and they started funneling money through it. Okay. And were there any repercussions for you guys? Yeah, they well, lost the company. Did the feds come in at all? The the accounts would go from Istanbul to uh, to Malta to Cyprus to London to then this this shell company in Los Angeles to then our company, which basically ended up turning into a shell at some point. So and they then lost all the back to oh, Cyprus. Wow, wow. So when you lose the fifty one percent, so you're if fucked. I put any money into this company, it seems like it's going to go great. <laughs> no, it's you know, you know this it is, is going to go great because he knows what to fucking oh, look for. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. I have learned so much yes. about the, fel what the to feds do. are just building a case on you right now. Yeah, and basically, no, um, they, so we we were so adamant against what was happening. We got cut out. Yeah, I'm but pretty sure you would we, be. Uh, we already yeah. built the infrastructure that they ended up stealing from us, and they used our infrastructure that they they ripped away from us. All right, well, they fucking happens. pulled you it out of our hands. In life. I got fucked all the time. Who cares? Move on. And well, well, so then me and Katya, we love the Vikings, and we're like, let's just start a little Vikings podcast. We started that up. That's actually when we started chasing you down. We're like, who's the biggest sports commentator in the country? What? 
You're like a you, you sports commentary, <laughs> cultural I commentary. People say I'm a sports commentator. I, you I are. Am I? I don't know. I'm kind of a fake one. Like I'm well, not yeah. at all. I just talk over a clip on a cell phone for 30 seconds. How is that? How is okay, that not commentary? Your views are bigger than anybody's on ESPNs, and what are they doing? They're talking over a clip. Yeah, you're right. That's true. That's true. Actually, okay, go on. I'm sorry. You're, you're, there's there's more broadness to that, but mm-hmm. like at the end of the day, that was what brought you into industry. Mm-hmm. And um, so as we're building this thing out, we 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 find we we randomly stumble into Forty Love. I knew that you go Forty Love. Sometimes Barney's Beanery. We walked down to Forty One. This is why I'm a good guy, by the way. This is the misconception right here. You're sitting in there. We have a podcast that maybe has had like 250 views, which yeah. we still get to this That's day. That's not sometimes. true. You guys, no, you guys had a, I'm going to, you guys had some good views. Maybe a few Wild. over 10,000. Yeah, yeah, you we guys were had getting some good constant, views. Maybe 2,500 to 5,000 was okay. like kind of our range. Walk up to you, you're like, what's up, bro? I'm LJ. Wow, I freaking love your you shit. You walked up to me or I walked to you? I don't know. Walk up to you. Okay. Yeah, you were just like sitting at the bar. and <laughs> uh, I was like, yo, I love what you're up to. And somehow we got, I was able to like sit there and go, I want you to do a podcast with you at some point. Yeah. I think I remember that you were just I like, I think you had a little cocktail. So you're like, feel good. No, I remember that. I was, I was pretty actually normal. I remember you actually you know, coming up to me and you said, uh, I was a big fan of all your stuff you're doing. Uh, do you think you could do a podcast at any time? You know, whatever. And I was like, let's just do tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and you tipped the waitress nice that night too. I always have tipped. That's, I know, but you did I've like given a, a lot of my money away too. To, you did a to, thing where it was like, if they make the next point or whatever you tipped her like five i don't remember what it was it was, it was a good amount it of was money. a good she was like i tipped her 500 bucks probably yeah. i do a coin flip game so what i always that's do, what it was the coin flip game that's so what i do the waitress is a good game so you have options you have three options you either can take 20 percent right now yeah and just yep. whatever uh or you can flip a coin and if you guess it right i uh, will give you whatever the number sometimes i decide <laughs> yeah uh, you know 500 bucks a thousand bucks yeah and then if you lose though you get zero percent if you if you choose to mm-hmm. play the game and that's that's the game I play with. And she won that night. And then I feel bad too when they lose. I'm just like fuck. So I just reduce the money in half. Mm-hmm. And then I had this girl once who played the game and she lost like seven coin flips in a row. So her tip like ended up being like two dollars and fifty cents. And then I was like, this point, I'm like, she can't get it right. Fuck, I gotta give her two dollars and fifty cents. Oh shit. And that was it. She went. To you gotta crying, stay true to the law. Crying in the fucking bathroom and shit and all that was weird. Ruined her whole night. Mm-hmm. Um, and then somehow through a bunch of different interactions, the one thing that we've done right is we stick around, and we we continue to like we work. We, we use what we have available to us to be able to create the best thing possible. Well, you and moved on to Timmy Bounce Back. I was just going to say, what did you think when you saw us working with Timmy Bounce Back? You were like, I was like did I'm, you remember us? Were you yeah, like, I was like, I'm happy. People? I'm like, I'm happy that, uh, you know, Timmy, need, Timmy needed help. Timmy, if you, you know, Timmy's an interesting character. He just doesn't give a fuck at all. No, that's not true. No, I don't think he gives a fuck about like, just he doesn't. I think he just doesn't give a fuck about like his image. I mean. Like he's just like wild and he doesn't care, which right. is awesome. Which is not great. that he doesn't give a fuck about his pet craft. I think yeah. like you know, we did the bounce back beer, everything's yeah. great. I just think that uh, you know, what's what's great about Timmy is what I do as well and why I what I like to follow is people who don't bullshit that if you're drunk in the mor- three in the morning, mm-hmm. like why are yeah. you not documenting it? You know what I mean? Well, you know what's interesting about him too, and 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 very similar to you, is you care so deeply and but how people might judge that you care and the reaction to why you care or like the, the reaction to the, what that you have based on how you care mm-hmm. yours is fuck it. I'm going to charge through this fucking wall. Okay. It's like, what do you mean? When I'm angry? No, it's it, okay. Okay. People, it's a, people think that I'm not going to like come back to this. I have only shot five podcasts this year. Fuck it. We're going to show them like six in the next two weeks. Let's just yeah, drive I mean, I, I, through that's, that's this my wall. thing. My dad always said it too. My dad always is like, you're either on one extreme or the other. You're either doing nothing or you're doing <laughs> max like crazy. So just find a perfect balance. But like I said, I had a lot of distractions in the past year between the Nelk stuff, between the just life, Voldemort, life. you know, and then life. Uh, and life. And so basically, uh, you know, at this point right now, like I don't, if I'm not working, I sit here. Like, even if I try and watch TV and just sit down and relax, my head just fucking spins, you know? Because yeah. I'm still recovering from a lot of things that are, you know, happened in my fucking life. Yeah. Which wasn't fun. And so when I'm not working, working is the only thing that makes me happy and grinding. Yeah. Otherwise, I just sit there and fucking just go crazy. And what was so interesting with it happened last 72 hours, you've had some of Don't the give hard- all the details now. Of course not. I'm just kidding. But you've had a brutal 72 hours, right? I had a brutal 24 mm-hmm. hours. I had a really bro, like I had a really 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 bad. One of the probably one of the worst days of my life yesterday when you guys were here. And 
what you, so on one of your worst days of your life, you've created one of the best days of ours. Mm -hmm. And I I will appreciate you forever for that. And Mm -hmm. and I continue, we'll continue to work and and build our friendship and to build our business together. But that is what a lot of people don't understand is that on the worst day where the whole internet would be like, holy shit, Bob's going wild. You're, you're giving us one of our best days. So you had like, we are counting our numbers of, you know, how's your day going? You're my, I'm not even on the map. One out of 10. I don't even know what that means right now. Mm-hmm. That was a 10 out of 10 day for us. That's great. Not well, to see you in the situation that you're, but what you provided for us in yeah, those moments. I mean, that's, that's, I appreciate that's, that. that's what it is. You so just, great. You got to keep working. That's it. If you keep working and everybody keeps working, you're going to be good. Sorry. My phone's playing music. And, and that's, what's tough is people don't realize how important community is mm-hmm. to be able to actually build together. Being around the right people, you mean the right energy? Yeah. 100%. I feel bad too, because what you guys, and I always feel like I don't, because commu- I'm in my own world. I mean, you can describe, like, be honest, like you guys are sitting here, right? Describe what I'm like from the course of the beginning of the end of the day. Like in a sense of what am I doing? Well, you're, you're pacing. Pacing is you're my pacing, thing. You're pacing. You're on your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't even look up. I don't even look at you guys. That's the thing with me. I don't look at you guys. Like I don't even but look. But that's fine because we're all like kind of in our zone. Which I love. Know? Yeah. Which, yeah. That's when you're doing good shit. That right. doesn't bother me because you no. are creating the foundation. And it's not like you're foundation. looking down like in a rude way. Like mm-hmm. you're in your zone. We're all in our zone. Like it's not. Yeah. Because we like to work. Yeah. When everybody is willing to take on no matter what, like. It's like when you work at a company and like, uh, hey, do take the fucking trash out. And someone's like, right. oh, man, like complaining. Like when you have, a, like you said, back to your good environment, at any given time, if you're willing to take on any role that's going to benefit the, the household or the mm-hmm. company or anything like that without complaining, that's when it's good positive vibes. That's, yeah. I throw fucking everybody, anybody out that has bad vibes at all. Like, I mean, I had that, that we had some girl in here that was just like fucking, uh, uh, not your friend, by the way, she was cool. We had some girl in here who just wouldn't stop talking. And I was just like, bro, like, how can you not fucking realize that we're working? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, mean, I, I get a little too much. Like, like, read the vibe. Read the room. Read the fuck. I mean, read, read the, the fucking room. You know what I mean? And so, sh- yeah, I just like, I, I can't, I'm, not, I'm not a dick. I'm really not usually like, ever like, get out. But I hint at it. And I'm like, how the fuck do some people just not get the fucking, the memo? Right. And like, that's this where- is a working fucking environment. I see, so when I, be, since I've lived in LA, LA is only a work environment. LA. <laughs> Are you Only fucking dumb. LA sucks. Nobody fucking works here. This is the worst fucking city okay, in the world. Okay, but where do fake... they work then? I don't know. They know they all fucking nobody works. They're all fucking. But no. in our game, LA is a great work environment, right? Because I, it just gives you the tools of the individuals coming through with that are pillars of industry. Yeah, there's like one percent of the people work here. That's it. I totally agree. I mean, with you go to like the Midwest, like people work. Like, it's hard yeah, to find yeah, like yeah. an editor, videographer, anybody yeah. that like grinds with you. Yeah, but like, in that, this in but I'm saying in the industry because everybody's trying to be a fucking star or whatever. But I think like Hollywood isn't really what it used to be. I don't think that everybody no. comes here now to be an actor as much because you can kind of do anything. You can from go anywhere. wherever. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, all the like movie studios and stuff are here and shit. But I don't know. I don't. I just fucking. But they're like, not even shooting here that much anymore either. Yeah, they're not obviously shooting here that much either. Yeah. So you know. But what a lot of people don't understand is entertainment is you have to bring some craft to the table, learn how to edit, learn how to shoot video, learn how to be able to bring on sponsorships. Here they come. Understand like where your talents lie, and then you can get a chance to kind of bridge those next gaps. Yeah, and don't spend too much time on shit that you're not, you're not you're not good, good at. at. And yeah. if yeah, if you if you hate it, you gotta just like push forward. Yeah. I'm I'm interested to know about you. Like, while you're grinding and building the list of individuals that you'll be interviewing over the next this week. this place will be fucking with this mindset that I'm in right now, marine like fucking discipline. I used to watch all when I grew up. I think this had a part of like this is why my fucking discipline is like I don't stop. Is I used to watch nonstop on repeat, like military boot camp shit. Like really, fucking, oh, all the time. Like always just like, like military, what? like, like just motivational, like, cause we're all the same age. Like, I mean, I don't know, like just walking, like literally like hell camp. I've seen every fucking thing on hell camp and Marines. And Did you ever sh- think about going in? No, I don't think yeah. I have the balls to do it, to be honest. That's why I admire them for doing that. I don't think I have the balls to do that. <laughs> if you, I, uh, I you haven't so. watched Succession, right? No, I don't watch TV. Dude, is he kind of like Kendall yeah. from Succession? It's Not like in a, a mix, negative sense. Is no, no, he, it's is a Kendall, mix is of Kendall like Kendall and, <laughs> and um, what's the younger brother? You think you got some tism? 
I could be autistic. I, I mean, I know my mother would never tell me. I mean, because is that the thing? Like, would they? How would I know? Would my parents? Have You're been like tell socially. Me? It's like a little social awkwardness. Yeah, there's certain days where I'm just really on. And I'm really out of well, it. Like I just, and especially in the city, the heebie-jeebies kick in, and I don't want. Like even just there at Barney's, I was just like, bro, I don't, I don't like anybody. That I know it sounds like an asshole thing, but I just don't. I've had such a horrible experience here over time. I, it's really like fucked up my perception of anybody in Los Angeles. What would happen sad. to change your opinion on Los Angeles? What would need to happen? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Just nothing? No, nothing. Uh, maybe if maybe maybe if I worked nonstop in this location or some location that we have and just crushed it here, but I would still never like to go outside. Well, the thing about LA is like you do have to get out. Even living here, and I like LA, but you have to leave. Like... If I'm here for too long, I fucking go nuts. And you I mean have in leave. the city? The city. Oh, yeah. You got to just. You got to get the fuck out. I mean, I think that hopefully there's like an earthquake soon and it just no. breaks off. Well, you know? that's not great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Because <laughs> <I'm joking. I'm laughs> then it's like governed over international laws because this it's like floating to Hawaii. Yeah, just have it break off and just move a little. <laughs> yeah, you know. A little further away. I think like once a, you're like 30 years out, you're international be an island. Law. Yeah, I have nothing against the people that live here. It's just a personal choice that I just don't like it here. I get it. You know what well, I mean? Well, there, there, there is a negative thing here if you're not careful. And that's why it's all about bridging the gap of like, there is actually a bunch of people that are unbelievable that here, are but that we're all so fucking disconnected. I just gotten fucked by a lot of people here. And so what I do, the problem is I look at every individual and I see the people that fucked me. Yeah. And so I just fucking that makes sense. don't fuck with anybody. So why do you work so hard though? What is, what are you working towards in uh, your head? Like Honestly, I think I work so hard to just sometimes... You know, uh, it depends the stage I'm at in my life. Like right now I'm working really hard because I really thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy working hard. You know, I really do. Like I was always like when I was doing anything, like doing the concrete testing, like I, I would put these fucking things in a machine and like, you know, you work for six hours. I did that for like a year and break it down. And like, you know, I did all the shovels and dirt type work too. And I would always just try and like beat everybody. And they would always be like, dude, Bob, we get paid by the hour. Like, you can't make us look bad. Like, because if you're doing these numbers <laughs> yeah. and breaking all these fucking blocks, you know, and then I, I respected it and slowed down a little bit. But I, I can't imagine you working for somebody because no. you're such a no, bro. That's you're a, such a force no. and an entity. I give like I, you with a boss. No, I would give be in chaotic. Oh, not at all. I'm a fucking disciplined soldier when I have to work for somebody, you know, in a sense. Now that I've gotten like a little bit like when I was in the you know, working all these different jobs, caddying, fucking, I was the hardest working motherfucker there by far. I would outwork anybody. I know. I get that. I get that you're a hard worker. And I would never be ego. I would always listen to the fucking leader, whoever the leader was. Got it. And so you would just take tasks and military, drive. No yes. matter what, I would always listen to whoever's fucking driving the ship. And I would try and outperform anybody around me. So that's where you feel comfortable now being kind of assertive in what needs to happen. And then you expect a lot. From the individuals that work. Oh, for yeah. I mean, it's I like, just, hey, like, let's do this to the tens. And the funny thing, that wasn't even really my upbringing. I was kind of like spoiled and shit, you know? Yeah. Like, in a sense, we didn't come from money, like, but we were, we actually born on a very poor street, Ferry Street in Lawrence. Lawrence is the, I was born in literally the ghetto, which is funny. It's the ghetto of Massachusetts. It's hard to believe. You heard the music I listened to when I, when I turn into, <laughs> when I, that music turns on, I Well, you were duty low. <laughs> that was, yeah. But Brothers. Was a lot of Dominican uh, music down there. They listen to Dominican music. Okay. Puerto Rican, Dominican guys down in Lawrence. But what's the carrot that you're chasing? In life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's that expression mean? Like the end goal? Yeah. What's that carrot that you like think is dangled out in front of you Not that you're chasing? Not even in life, in like the next three years. Next three years? Um, I mean, I just would love to... All right, let's fast forward to three years just happened. Uh, it would be great to have a consistent show that's really good that people learn from and that people... Consistent. Consistency. Like, I, I mean, if I could say, hey, you know what? Every week for three years, I did a fucking podcast show that was really good. You know, that's that would be a carrot at yeah. the end, you know? So, and then uh, also... Because my, 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 my mindset changed about, like, you know, family and all having the like, kids and all that stuff. Like, you know, I wanted that, but... You know, not anymore as much. I'm going to probably put in some more work for five years, you know, before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just like head down. Yeah, probably head down and everything like that. But just work, you know. Mm -hmm. How do you think you're going to balance all of that? You got a kid Yeah, so the I got a kiddo on the oh, way. Oh, man, you got a kid yeah. on the way. That's crazy. Yeah, well, I mean, my character. Your wife is the greatest girl. I'm sorry to cut you off. I do that a lot, but I get yelled at. Your wife is absolutely fucking amazing. She's the greatest, She's great. greatest girl ever. My wife is my favorite person in the world, and everything I do is fighting for what we're building in our like safety, our comfort, and our ability to live the life that we care about. Mm -hmm. Purple banter, we're 
I only care about being this entity that like can put people on that have great fucking stories that are positive yeah. and, and fun. You're trying and, to build a digital media company. And that's like, that's all we're fighting for. So at the end of the day, like we're just like tying all those strings and trying to tighten the rope for we can carry more people up the ladder. I think that you're, you know, when's the baby due? Uh, what do we got? We're halfway through. September. Yeah. So with you, it's tough because you know what your wife's pregnant and this is interesting. Your wife's pregnant. You're pouring in all this work. You're working crazy amount of hours. It's kind of hard to like, you know, she's pregnant at home on, by herself, but you got a crunch time right now of like whatever September six months say of yeah. just grinding so hard. Cause when that baby is there, you're going to have like, you know, the ability to still work and stuff like that, but it's, it's going to tighten it's up a little change. bit. So you got to go hammerhead fucking right now. Right. But what people I'm so confused because there's a little bit of an LA mentality of work. Like my dad would leave at 7am and come back at eight, like all the time. That's great. I mean, as long and as so for me, our days start a little bit more at like 10 or nine 30. Mm -hmm. So that means I come home at 10 or 11 or maybe three. Mm -hmm. And, but the industry that we live in, one allows us to see the world in different ways, allows us to interact with all these people. This isn't it. It's work to me, but at the same time it's play. And, mm -hmm. but unfortunately most people like when you're in these dope condos and you're, you can run down to Barney's and you can that's, be that's in Vegas. They don't realize that like there's a task to be done at the same time. And I love the balance. But I'm have, I mean, I'm even having, cause I'm totally like, I'm locked in. I'm loving. I'm this is this is the most fun I've had in the last year building Good. this in like my entire career in the last 10 years of media. You're like, a great person, I, by the way. You know that? Thank you, Bob. Amazing soul. Thank you. But I'm having a hard time envisioning myself back in a relationship. Fuck Be the relationship. Not happening. <laughs> See, Fuck no. that. Fuck no, around. Have fun. No, right. Because Blow I, a couple the guys next... get fucked a couple times. Do some fun. Fuck the relationships. Not happening. You, on the other hand, you're good. You fucking found the girl. You hit the right thing. You're good. Yeah. Keep working. That's the, I mean, but fucking fuck that. Me and you, fuck that. <laughs> no, not We're happening. We're too fucked up. Not yet, because your business isn't built yet. Right. Your business exactly. needs to be built first. Exactly. And I'll tell you yeah. what, I put my relationship in front of my business uh, in the past, not saying any which one, but a lot of the times, because, uh, you know, I always just look at like, I, I want to make sure I, I always made priority number one, the significant other that I was with. And uh, that I've learned was one of the biggest mistakes that I've ever done. It's but so my priority is Lulu in the wild. Right. And now it's also our child coming. What's, but, is that a children's book? <laughs> yeah, what is Lulu that? In the wild. Lulu in the wild. That's, that's her. What that's her. Oh, okay. yeah. I don't dox her. Right. And but at the same time, when she's my priority, both of our priorities align. Right. And so it works. If she's been awesome, dude. She's yeah. fucking pregnant and she lets you fucking all night work with me. That's fucking an amazing girl. Don't don't lose it. You can do some special shit for her once in a while. She, and he that's does. and he like does. and that's where it's like when it's our time together, it's like it's so sacred. It's very precious. Yeah. And you have to and that's what it's all about. At the end of the day, like that time is the only time that matters. Um at the end of the day. Um but in a, a place like LA, you got to work your fucking butt off to create peace, man. You know why I always didn't like, why I always liked the East Coast more than the West Coast outside of just like the environment, the people, like in my brain was the time difference. So in my brain, if it's 5 a.m., if I wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning in LA, right? It's 11 o'clock in New York sure. and it would drive me sure. fucking crazy because I'd be like, they have a fucking three hour head start on me. Right. Yes. And I don't even know if that makes sense, but it kind of does. It totally well, it's, makes sense. It's because you're from the East Coast too. So like you're already just naturally naturally on that time. yeah you know and, what and I mean then, and then but you're, for content schedule and stuff if you can be up at six a.m. you can post at eight for New York I, I just want to beat everybody the punch. but that's why we work because I'm up early and you're five a.m. every late. morning should yeah. be if you're in the grinding stage in the beginning stage yeah. which I need to get back to now because I was here and then down a little bit and bring it back up but when I was like starting my shit the first two years bro it was every fucking morning that alarm would go off at five fifteen I wouldn't. Go to uh, the steam. The I had such a fucking routine, and it was just like five a.m. to fucking the end of the day, every day, working on my phone, giving everything I could to people. That was my one of my things, good qualities, and I still do it today. Is like I'd message all these different celebrities or anybody that I need, thought would be beneficial to my business, and I just be like, dude, what can I do for you? I have all these people that I'm building. Let me just help you. I just want to build a relationship and help you. I want to give you what, what are you selling right now? You have clothes. It's the like, same thing with Lil Dirk. I messaged Lil Dirk today. I'm like, Dirk. You want to promote this for you? Like, just out of the blue. It's not my fucking brand. I'm not making a penny. Yeah. But I know that fucking these people respect that. 
I yeah. give, I give, I give, I give. And it's mm -hmm. fucked me at times, but at the end of the day, that's that's advice that I would give is always give. Mm -hmm. 100%. So how do we how do we label you in the like the purple banter universe right now? You're like you're our pod father. You're, the, the, you're the silent the assassin. Father. Yes. The silent assassin. Yeah. You're helping us in more ways than we can probably even talk about right now. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a beautiful thing. Like you've you're literally you've reached you've helped us with a lifeline to be able to allow us to even mm -hmm. have a little bit more like financial security mm -hmm. as we bridge the gap for each other. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just I'm I'm so appreciative of it, man. I mean, bro, it's just it's really just keep helping me. I'll help you. That's it. I mean, plain and simple. I think that we just got to keep keep grinding. Like, I mean, I the thing with me is I get I my my you know sleep schedule needs is that's important too because I can't turn it off a lot of times. And it obviously before like has to do sometimes like I zap and whatnot, which I've been good at. I took a couple zaps last night just to fucking because my head was fucking clouded and sometimes it just blocks the pain. You're zappy without the zaps, though. I'm good, bro. I mean, I just did 26 days, I think, just not even looking at it. Yeah. And like it's not a thing where like it's like the old days where I was like really took them like. Like I have no because I had things happen from taking them too much, but I like, I'm not going to continuously, like, do it anymore. Like, but I will pick my spots where I'll take a fucking Adderall when I know I need to. And especially, like, for me, it's, like, horrible as it sounds, it does, for me, just distracts my mind from... It, again, puts you in the zone. It puts me in the zone yeah. and blocks out what I'm going through. It. And I don't even give a fuck. I just need to block out, what, yeah. you know, what happens. So, mm -hmm. that's basically that, you know? So, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm fucked up in the head a little bit, but that's, yeah. that's just the way it is, you know? Aren't we all? Yeah, you know? I wonder how long this the recovery phase is for all that stuff that happened. It it's 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 one, and we it, don't have to we don't have to edit anything. No, I'm talking it, about, nothing about in specific. I'm it's about. about just you being intentional about what you need on a physical level, a spiritual level, um, and on a, on a financial level. Are you going to bring the cot in tonight to sleep next to me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be like, hey guys, do you mind that this is? Can you guys both pull up two cots next to me and fucking send them such a Who would pussy? be Big Spoon, Little Spoon between right? you guys? Between me and him? I don't yeah. fucking We're talk about that with dudes. I'm big no, spoon big spoon? no dude yeah. talk with bed shit. I you know. You gay, fucking whatever, great, but not me. You know yeah. what I mean? So, you can't um, cuddle with LJ? I wouldn't cuddle with LJ. Okay. <laughs> no, I wouldn't cuddle with LJ. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, that's just exclusively for Lulu. Got we, it. We just had uh, we had uh, Burke Reicher on here, which was pretty good, huh? That was sick. Unbelievable. That's Bur like LJ's dude, too. Oh, I didn't know that. We're yeah. just trying to like keep the like excitement yeah, down trying a little, to be trying like... to be cool. I dude, I love the guy. I love what he's building for comedy. I love what he's done within the podcast universe. Um, now what he's doing with his m movie, The Machine. I just everything about that is, is I think, is really important. Um, I could we could have done so much better on that interview. I could have done better. Just fucking, you know, that's the hard part. Is like, when, you, when you, you have shit on your head, though. It's yeah. hard because you're, it's even funny. You're talking to somebody like a high, powerful fucking person and yeah. your mind can be sometimes so checked out. Mm -hmm. so I'm just like bullshitting a lot, just making up things <laughs> as you can tell. No, it was a good interview. It was, I, it was a good. Cool. Interview. We're, we're, we're getting in the groove. Josh Damel tomorrow and or da Dumel. Dumel. Josh Dumel. <laughs> I mean, well, the way it's spelled, it looks fucking I know. whatever. It's just, you know. I mean, I'm a big fan. Music. I know him. I just don't sometimes I no, recognize totally. I mix up his name. And then Swartzen's coming over, I think, to do a little thing. I mean, like the Vikings main That's the Vikings squad. The Ameri best Vikings fans. America's got talent. We're going to see Howie Mandel yeah. tomorrow at 2 30, which is going to be weird. We're doing back to back pods. I got to do his pod, and then he's going to do mine. You yeah, like what do you think he's going to ask you? Like, do you go to his desk during his... Like, yeah. I wonder how I that's going to play. We're just shooting it there, and he's going to give us the footage. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I think that it's just going to be weird back to back. That's a little odd. It is weird. Yeah. That's a yeah. little odd. Like, but you almost want to put, like, Josh in the middle of it just to, like, mix it up, you know? Yeah. I like That's my thing, too, is I have no, like, set co-host, and I like to just rotate, whether it be LJ, whether it be you. Whether, I like to just keep it moving, you know what I mean? I like, I like just I love different that. people just come in and out. Because I like yeah. to give people opportunity, too, to join something I think that's pretty cool, sit down with some cool people. Yeah, you, you do an interesting thing where you trust first and then see where people land. And then from that, you're like, ah, you got to tweak this or yeah, tweak yeah. that. It's like, Hey, I'll trust you from the get, but then you do have your opinion at the end. Yeah. This is fun though. Do you enjoy podcasting? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty cool. It's the best. Love it. It's, the best. it's Love cool it. when you can just talk like, cause I think normal, this is like a normal conversation for me. I think I'm my most self when I have a microphone in front right. of me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, otherwise, I'm just kind of checked out from conversations. It's unbelievable that there's an industry that can give you financial security through having conversations. It's a really oversaturated market, though. I mean, there's so many fucking podcasts now. It's so hard to even get going. Yeah, no, it is. But podcasts is. grow and die so quick, man. Not, like, no. you've seen the, the element of, like, something that works, mm -hmm. and then everybody wants to, like, spin it. It's like, shoot, yeah. like, it's working. Like, let's do what you need to do. 
yeah. to keep those entities together. And I mean, you think like Walmart's like it's going to fall one day. These podcasts break overnight. Yeah. Me and Conley had our first, I mean, I've had so many fucking podcasts. Me and Conley had a great, <laughs> great fucking podcast. Like, you got, you came in at like the perfect fucking time too. Yeah. We were a little late to the game even still though. Like, I mean, yeah. our, but our podcast was fucking great. It was me and Timmy and we had, I think like fucking, we were getting like 500,000 downloads on Spotify or something per episode you know obviously after we build a little momentum milk boys were actually the ones who much as i don't want to give them credit right now they were that episode helped us kind of get to a really higher number who booked that like was that i did you? that's when you kyle did? and i started first talking when kyle and i first met uh and steve and i had kyle and steve in there and then uh that's how it started and then there was like a break and then kyle and i decided to go into business together so yeah it's getting a little sloppy though it's getting a little ugly with the the you know what, what happened with between me and them so it's kind of I think coming to the tail end of it, That's or good. could be just beginning. So I don't know. <laughs> the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, I love uh, it's whatever I decide to do. Yeah. Well, we're going to keep these internal pods. They're going to, they'll keep on coming over time. But man, we just appreciate everything Dude, that's let's happened. Let's just keep going. Let's get and, to work. Uh, I, you know what? A lot of the times these banter for the peoples are not just about watching it right now. They're little time capsules of watching things kind of grow. It's a documentary. And by the way, the, uh, this, program this episode will be edited by the kid that we're bringing in here so if there's any fuck-ups it's that kid's fault it's not gonna be lj or her we're giving him a test to see how he edits this so you can rank the edit in the comments or whatever and just say how he did one to ten love it over and out god bless you all this is banner for the people good stuff sweet 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 i need to know everything who in the what and the where i need everything trust me i hear what you're saying but i like it's new what you're telling me I'm curious, George, I hop in the Porsche, five and a horse, I'm ready for war.